$3,000 a month just going out. We cried, we argued, we debated, we did this thing scared. Three, two, one. debt we are paying off our credit card what's the amount we're gonna pay two thousand one hundred seventy four dollars and ninety cents to know that we're like really here like are we really really doing this I'm excited so um, we're about to pay our last payment <sighs> okay three two one we're dead <sighs> free are debt free, y'all. Seriously, probably did it. Woo! <laughs> Scratching and claw. A year and eight months ago, that was January of 20... 2020. 2020. Pretty normal, right? Pretty normal. In a bad situation as far as his debt went. We thought just stack as much cash as we can. No matter how much money we had, we're still putting out over $3,000 a month in just debt. It was stressful living, you know, making as much as we were, I guess, and living paycheck to paycheck. I got out the military um, in 2018 and didn't really have uh, a job lined up at the time. It was just pretty much a faith step. Living with somebody in their basement, I mean, it was, it was bizarre. I kept out Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover book and I took it with us. And I'll never forget, was we were, try, we were trying to figure it out. We were trying to make any extra income. I had partial disability. He had partial disability, right? Mm -hmm. he had partial, we both had partial disability. And he was going to school because school paid him extra. And then I was taking care of our son full time. And I just remember picking up that book, finally, after 10 years, that book sat on my shelf. My dad gave it to me a decade ago. And I finally picked it up and I just pitched it to him over the phone. I was like, we can't keep doing this. You know, we just, you know, having, first of all, having to call home and ask for money. A couple months prior to that, we had to ask for money for the first time in my adult life. We accepted the help for sure of being able to get back on our feet, but it was still very hard, uncomfortable for us and a little straining, maritally, if I'm honest. Um, and so I told him about the book and we didn't even have the four walls that Dave Ramsey talks about. We didn't have food, clothing, shelter, whatever, right? We didn't have our own. So instead of paying off our debt at the time, we decided to stockpile everything and get a house and move out and be able to kind of reestablish ourselves from there. And that's when we started 20 by 20. We're not gonna say the journey had been smooth sailing the whole way through. No. There, was, there were moments where we were just like, man, I'm gassed. There's moments where it's conflicting, like, man, you're taking everything, like, what is this? This is, this is crazy. There's one from Les Brown. He says, you know, you just gotta, you just gotta get hungry, right? You just gotta get sick and tired, pretty much of being sick and tired. Yeah. And, um, that feeling of not really being able to provide for yourself or that feeling that, I mean, it's scared. We didn't yeah. scared. Maybe this guy in Nashville, Tennessee, maybe he knows something, right? You know, they, I've looked on YouTube and, you know, the first thing pops up is people that go against this program. And, but then I'm listening to people screaming, I'm dead free and made it through. And I just like, you know what, we're just going to have to do it. I mean, we've tried everything else we've tried and it got us really nowhere. Um, I was making... I think 63,000 a year, yeah. right? Uh, before taxes, right? Uh, in Virginia, right? Northern Virginia, where it's like the cost of living is like Hawaii, right? And um, Or California. And to end, we ended with, uh, I believe it was 173,000, uh, but then after taxes, we're taking them home like 154,000. Mm -hmm. What sacrifice did we make? I mean, we made sacrifices on giving up vacations, oh, giving up celebrations, yes. anniversaries, yes. birthdays. I yes. mean, we got invited places we yes. just couldn't go. I mean, there are so many times I'm telling you that, you know, we just smiled through it, right? There is there are outfits, right? Places that we just wanted yes. to, there's some things on sale, deep sales that we yes. wanted to buy and we had to literally cut it short at the outlet malls because we are just like, 
this this ain't part of God's plan, you know? And then the two biggest sacrifices, I gave my Traverse back to the dealership. I loved that car. So I gave it back and I think we paid a penalty for that because I ended up having to pay $11,000 to give the car back. But 11,000 is a lot less than 40,000 for me to keep it for five more years and pay it off for it to just continue to depreciate in my driveway. And for me, I had my dream car. We called it my Christmas gift. It was a 2020, brand new off the showroom floor, color that I wanted to use, Dodge Ram. I mean, this thing had everything in the brown leather seat we'll stuff. It was the, in here. it was the, it was the, it was the long corner dish. Everything. I mean, I researched this car down to it. I mean, this car was. <laughs> Yeah, everything. I was laying on my floor and, and I heard the voice of the Lord, because the only voice that would have told me to do something like this crazy and I'll obey it. I got up, I went into the thing and I and I, like a like a dog with his tail between his legs said, Why I, I think I gotta give my car back. I, I get, took my car back the day after. I told her right. and uh the all I had to pay was a two hundred dollar processing fee. We bought the car in December twenty nineteen yes. and gave it back no. in June twenty twenty one and the dealership told us it did not depreciate at all no, it didn't. in value. It did not. It so did not just because of the way the econ economy is going right now. What we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the, the moments where I'm working in, I'm working for the State Department and I have to be up. I have to, I have to be up at two o'clock in the morning to be at work by four o'clock. We have one car, and I'm waking up the six-month-old, the wife, and yeah. she's having to drive me. So he, we yeah. would, we would wake up. He would wake up at two o'clock. I would wake up at two thirty. We would be in the car on the road road to work by three a.m. He drop him off at four four thirty, and I would head back and get back to the house about six o'clock a.m at the exact time that my son is waking up for the day. Yes, and then- And we did that for six months. Six, yeah, six months. About, I mean, about five months, yeah. and then the last month, our friend actually let us borrow her car. Borrow her car, sacrifice, right? We did, we couldn't afford, I mean, oh just literally, gosh. literally got to a point where it was just, it was, it was managed. And, and, and we say that, you say the sacrifices, we chose to really take it serious. I'm telling you right now, there are some sacrifices, I would tell you, on this road, to how bad do you want it, your freedom. Ah, and I'm getting emotional, guys, because when you start to think back of all of this journey and what it's been like, listen, sometimes you had to walk through hell to get to heaven. It was conflict within our household. All of this yes. is because we did not have the greatest income driving force in our life, and that was because we were broke. I wouldn't talk anything really about money. Look, I would tell you, I'll tell you a story that I remember vividly in my mind. We came up and I'm talking about sleeping on a bed where the mattress was on the floor and it was in between the rails because there was no rails to keep hold of the mattress, right? I came from very, very humble beginnings, right? Where it was, my mother told us when we got home that, you know, go straight to bed, don't turn the lights on and, the re and just go straight to bed. And the reason she was telling us that because the electricity bill, they shut our lights off and she didn't, she didn't want us to know by hitting the lights why it ain't working. Right, I come from that. I'm talking about roaches running across the floor type stuff. I remember when mom and dad got, you know, got married. We moved to uh, Kentucky and we lived in a two bedroom apartment. I'm talking about a thing that had to be like 600 square feet. I mean, literally, two bedroom apartment, and there was three of us sleeping on a futon mattress. Sleeping on a futon mattress. That's where we were living. And I remember walking into the room, fast forward, and seeing mom and dad counting coins out of, you know, there was these big old like uh, containers. Look at that, that changing. And I remember seeing them on the bed counting nickels and dimes just so they can try to see if they can stretch that to buy some groceries, right? And it was always paid. I mean, I remember payday loans was a part of our life. I remember insurance, right? They hoping that it rained in the hill so hell can hit our car so that they can get an insurance claim, right? And don't use the money to fix the car, but use the money to do something else with. Wow. You know, I, I remember times where uh, filed bankruptcy. Right, bankruptcy because you know we, we we buy a car and as soon as we bought the car, the transmission go and we didn't have any money. But if we we're in the military at the same time, and it was like paycheck. To, I mean, the, the key to our household. This was like a slogan that became so normal, and that word was paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Paycheck to paycheck. I mean, we'll go home on Christmas and what have I mean gifts packed to the to the back of the max to the back of the car, so we can't even see out the back window in in our Ford Explorer car. I mean. And, and we're like, man, but in Jan, I mean, it was like, I can't afford, we get clothes twice a year. I mean, talk about Christmas and, and, and new school year, and the school year. Yeah. That's it. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I remember very few conversations about money. How to manage it, how to handle it, what to do with it. 
Um, I was told not to ever get credit cards, sure. but the rest of it, not really. I, I remember when I first started looking into Dave Ramsey, the first step is to write all your debts down, right? And so in the beginning, that very first step, I never counted my car note as debt. I just never did. I thought it was like a house or I thought it was like, you know, once you get it, you got it, it's yours. But whenever I looked at that program and I realized like with that Traverse, I'm 40 more thousand in debt on top of whatever, what else we already have. I do come from bankruptcy on both sides. Um, so for me to know that my son, to, to do this for him meant more to me than a living paycheck to paycheck. I went to college and I was literally eating peanut butter out of the jar some nights because I, I didn't have any money. And I'll go out to eat with my friends and I'll just tell them oh, I'm not really hungry, I'm just here for the here for the fellowship. And really I just couldn't afford it, anything. So I got through college, I mean, losing weight and everything. No, nobody really knows that. I never want to go back into that situation again. Missing Christmas and taking my six month old down a, a highway early in the morning when semi trucks are swaying. Yeah. Right, mom? I mean, we're going through all of this. Broke living with people twice. I just going through all of this situation to being able to pay this thing off now without hesitation. Let me let me show you. Let me tell you this number. This this number right here. I got it wrote down, so I ain't gonna I ain't gonna mess this up. So, so the total amount that we paid was two hundred two thousand six hundred ninety three dollars and seventy four cent. Two hundred two thousand six hundred ninety three dollars and seventy four cent in a year and eight months has gone through our hands into someone else's hands. Now we did have supernatural debt cancellation on some things. We sold stuff. We got rid of things. You know how you have payments every single month that you just pay, pay, pay. Well, our monthly amount that we basically, without receiving an increase on our jobs, the monthly amount that we got back was $3,123.59. $3,000 a month just going out to other people, to bill collectors. To we're not talking about our water bill, our cell phone no, bill, our rent. No, we're not so we're talking about, about furniture loans, cars, <laughs> you know, regular stuff. Listen, you know, Best yeah. Buy, life insurance, right. credit cards, all kinds. And then the thing is, we paid the credit card off before and then ran it up again. We fell into that and so we paid for it again. So I will tell you this, this is as much of an emotional journey as it is a mental journey. We're free now. But see, yeah. now we have options, right? So people work to pay their bills. We don't have any more bills, right? So working now at this point is optional. Um, living our life on our terms is optional. Um, you know, just deciding to spend all of our money on stockpiling here or vacationing there or spending, sending our children to college or paying for someone else's, you know, son or daughter to go to college. Those are all options to us now. Because we live like no one else, we get to live and give like no one else. And so there are some big decisions that are getting ready to happen very, very soon. Um, get to own our lives, um, freedom, <laughs> some say freedom is free, but we tend to disagree. We went through some valleys, um, we cried, we argued, we debated, we did this thing scared, we yeah. did this thing excited, we did this thing when we were full of energy, we did this thing when we were tired, $202,000 on our net, $3,000 a month in just debt. Now, walking into, into, into jobs and stuff like that, let me tell you something right now. Listen, when I walk into work now, it's like... What am I doing? Why am I not on a jet ski somewhere? Why am I not on a mission trip somewhere helping somebody? Why am I not? Why am I not teaching people this? Why am I not? Why am I not with my family? Yes. Why am I not teaching? Why am I not with every game for my son? Why am I not sitting there tutoring somebody who needs help because I have a mind to do it? Why? Why am I not giving back more? I cancel so many vacations. I miss so many trips. I haven't had a real honeymoon or no. a real or a no. real anniversary. My son hasn't had a real birthday celebration no. or a real. None of us. Listen, let me tell you, so, but because now I don't got to clock in or ask anybody no questions on when I can go or where I can go because we did what we had to do. And this right here, this is coming off like this because it's real. We did it. We literally did it. Our greatest ability is our availability. And yeah. that is what we fought for. And by God, we got it. Our life is never going to be the same. We were trying to do something for our kids and our kids' kids. Bankruptcy and, 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 and foreclosures and, and, and repossessions. Them bad words, those are cuss words in our family. We don't do that. We don't move like that no more. What happens next? What now? 
we get free. You guys did it. You were faithful. You stayed consistent. You cried. You made mistakes. Yeah. We stumbled through this bad boy. You will win if you do not quit. You will yeah. get through it if you just stay consistent. Yeah. It's not easy, guys. It's not, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, it's not easy. Every single day is not easy. And the thing is, everything is hard, right? It's hard to be in debt because you gotta look at that stuff every month. Guys, it's going out to whoever. And it's hard to get out of debt. We just chose a different hard. We didn't choose what everybody else told us to do. We didn't choose, we didn't take that advice of, oh, just pay the payments and increase your income. No, I want all of my money, all the time. I don't wanna owe anybody anything ever. To getting out of debt, mine was, it's a scripture, and we say it biblically, but I just related it. I, you know, I turned it into something natural. It says, we are overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. I had to remember what I've already been through. I had to remember the, the, the journey and the parts of my life in which I watch it, having to remember mom and dad counting them coins on that bed. I had to remember yeah. how many anniversaries I had to tell my, my, my wife no, or how many things I wanted to get for my son because he's so deserving of it but I, I couldn't do it. Or how many times I had to live in a basement of somebody's home. If I didn't do it, my son would have to do it. Generational curse broke here. That's right. If we didn't finish it, somebody else was. And I refused to leave $202,000 on my son's, or uh, on my son's or daughter's or any of my family. I refused to leave that on their front doorstep. So for me, um, circling back to the very beginning, um, I mentioned it and it wasn't exactly received in the way that and so it was a process We had to kind of grow and mesh together with it But I didn't let my foot off the gas with the desire to be debt-free. I didn't know how it was gonna happen I even said yes to the truck He said yes to the traverse and then on the journey we had changes of heart. So now we're down to a one-car family so my advice is to keep your posture have some accountability because once you say that you want to do it, you are stuck to it, right? You cannot change your mind. And that's what I love about being married is you have permanent accountability. When you don't feel like it, when you can't, when you change your mind, you got a person sitting there next to you, watching you, you in the form of your children. Oh, I thought you said you were going to do this, or I thought you, and, and that, that accountability is, so get accountability. If you're single, find you some people that you can talk to about this and that can keep you encouraged, that can keep you accountable to what you said you were gonna do. Put some deadlines on it, maintain your posture, and do not quit, do not quit. You can slow down, you can change your pace, you can change directions, detour, but do not quit. Stop listening to them and you'll get there. Ooh, yes. Stop listening to the yes. people that say it's impossible. They look at the number and people, We literally yeah. have people tell us, I mean, this ain't for them. This ain't for them. People older than us, people that we look up to and still do, of course, but this journey isn't for everyone. Stop. Just stop listening to the people that don't understand. Yeah. $202,000. I'll be 33 and he just turned 31. We get to enjoy our life. We get Disney World, we get Puerto Rico, we get Dubai, yeah. we get to go dive with the dolphin. Our very next goal though, after this, is set up our emergency fund so that we never have to swipe another credit card again and buy a pay cash for a car. Three, two, one. We're debt free!